KPM. Hello, 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 my friends. How are you doing at home? Are you feeling great today? You should be feeling great because this is the lesson where you can enrich your vocabulary. You got to learn a lot of heartwarming lessons and of course valuable life lessons that we can practice every day. You must be wondering what we are going to learn today, isn't it? Of course, you are now watching Didate TV KPM in the slot of success SPM 2022 and my name is Hanif Sean. I'm super excited of course because we are learning Kesusastraan Inggris tingkatan 4 dan 5 or English Literature for Form 4 and Form 5. So, you'll be wondering who would be teaching us today? Let's take a look at our teacher's profile. And there you have it, our teacher's profile. Of course, we have Madam Asima today, or actually you can call her Puan A. How are you, Puan A, today? I'm all right, thank you. I'm sure you're feeling fantastic for our lesson today. Excited to see everyone for this lesson today. That is great. And of course, Puan A, it's not just the both of us. We definitely have our interpreter, which is Chegu Buhari, or we can also call him Chegu BQ. How are you, Chegu BQ, today? Oh, he's feeling amazing. And actually, maybe instead of calling me Hanif Sean, you can call me HS. Since our teachers, you can call them like that. And of course, Puan A, what are we going to learn together in English Literature for Form 4 and Form 5 today? All right. So for today's lesson, we're going to specifically look at one short story that falls under prose and one poem that falls under poetry. Right, that's right. exciting. Shall we have our lesson All started? Alright, let's go. If everyone is ready, we are going to quickly have a look at this slide. And I'm sure most of you already recognise and remember the fact that there are six short stories. Specifically, we are going to look at embracing your shadow for today's lesson. Right? Let's take a quick look at what most of us already know upon reading this short story it begins with a rather tense moment there is somehow the feeling of frustration disappointment and anger that takes place in this conversation between the narrator and his wife rose so you've got a husband and a wife we sort of can guess that they are unhappy with each other but we're not sure why. But when we read further on, the text will show to us that a lot of the blame seems to lie at the, in the hands of the husband. Okay? No bias there, just statement of facts. All right? It's the men. Okay? <laughs> the readers, upon reading this text until the end, will have a lot of revelation being shown or given to them as they go into the husband's mind. He shares with the readers a lot of the thoughts that he has and the decisions that he has made over the years throughout his marriage, throughout his married life to Rose and family life, starting with the meeting of the mysterious woman. That Exciting? Does sound mysterious. mysterious? Very mysterious. Okay. So, upon reading this uh, short story, there are three major characters that we will read about. The first major character that we will meet is the husband himself, or the narrator, who's telling you a lot of what happened in this short story. So, we refer to him as the narrator. He is the husband to Rose and father to Luna. We don't know a lot about what he does, uh, where you're referring to occupation perhaps, but so much information is provided where his emotions are concerned. He shares with us a lot about what he thinks, what he feels. And a lot of those feelings are focused towards the women in his life. His wife, 
his daughter and the mysterious woman. Okay? He falls in love with this female stranger despite the fact that they don't glance at each other beyond three seconds. As he says, I remain forever captivated. And that memory has never left him. And when we read the story up to the present moment, the narrator says, I never thought of it as cheating. She is in his mind constantly, Hanif, but he says, I am not cheating on my wife. That's the narrator there. Mm. Okay? <laughs> At the end of the short story, he feels as though what he's done is what's best for him. As he says, now I know you are the true love of my life. The second character that we read about is Rose. As I'm sure most of you know, she is married to the narrator. And despite the fact that very little is revealed regarding Rose, we can actually gauge that she is a sensitive and intuitive woman. And they do say a woman's gut instincts is never wrong. She seems to realize that her husband's attention is always somewhere else, towards someone else, right? And so he says, right, in his thoughts, my wife Rose must have sensed the secret place you occupy in my heart, right? Some of you may be wondering if this is true, if she has realized this, does that mean the narrator never loved her? No, not at all. In fact, if you read the text with your classmates, with your teachers, you will find that very clearly in this text, the narrator continuously expresses his love, his admiration towards her. So that's the bigger question mark, isn't it? What exactly happened? Here you have in front of you, within your grasp, within your hug and embrace, a woman or a wife who already loves you, right? But he says, Rose became not only my loving wife, but the mother of my child. We get more information regarding the narrator and how he feels towards his wife, right? The third major character that we read about is the shadow. We don't know who she is. We don't know what her name is. We only know that he met her 18 years ago by chance. Look at what he says. Something about you set my heart fluttering. And the physical description of what she looked like at that moment, the three-second encounter, has never left him. She is constantly the focus of his thoughts. He says, I had two girlfriends before I met Rose, but you can guess who I benchmark Rose against. So we realize then that he constantly thinks about her. Honey, what yes. would you say to someone that you don't know suddenly showering you with a declaration of affection? How would you respond? I think it would be quite perplexing on that perplexing? matter. Perplexing? Yes. Take you by surprise? Take me by surprise and I'll be very perhaps unsure of what to do or what to say. All right. Let's Especially take a look at one of my students, see whether her answer matches yours. Right. If a complete stranger declare love to me, teacher, firstly, I will be in shock. I would probably ask them who they are and how they know me. Maybe after I say thank you, I will state clearly I will be more comfortable being friends with them instead of doing anything else. Secondly, I will also tell them I appreciate their confession. It's just that it is not something I am looking forward to. All right, that was a very interesting answer by our pupil here. So that's, it kind of like matches my answer that was perplexed and she's right. also shocked. 
Right. Okay, let's move on. We've seen three major characters. Let's look now at three storytelling devices that we come across as we read Embracing Your Shadow. And I would have to say, uh, Hanif, the use of flashbacks in this text is especially significant because the narrator constantly shares with us events that have happened events that are very much influenced by that first time he met her. Then you have monologues. He constantly speaks to himself. He constantly justifies his actions. He constantly talks to himself about the regrets he has, the feelings that he has towards the narrator. And then you also have symbolism as a device used to tell the story. Symbolism, as we know, is a device that we use where one person or one object, one colour even, is used to represent a major idea. So red for courage, black for death, pink for cute love. Here you have embracing your shadow. The shadow there represents love that is beyond our grasp, love that is not real. And it says here, an imaginary lover in an imaginary relationship ultimately destroys what's there in reality. The relationship that he has with his wife Rose is destroyed and we are left to wonder whether they will stay a happy family or not, right? So you've got their symbolism, and then earlier on we saw monologues. Do you speak to yourself? I do sometimes. You do? You yes. share your... Positive reinforcements. Okay, but look at this. When we look at the monologues of the narrator, he's sharing mostly all the things he feels he's done right obsessing over a woman he's only met for three, three seconds? seconds 18 years 18 ago 18 years ago right so we also looked at flashbacks how you have going into the past not all are happy memories how you have the narrator justifying his actions especially towards his family by uh, recalling all the beautiful moments. They're not even real. Those moments that he seems to share with his lover are all... In fantasy. In his fantasy. Right? No, that, is, that is truly uh, very interesting. I do have a question for you. Oh, you uh, have a question when, for me, yes, right? Yes, because you did mention that the shadow is like a love that is beyond his grasp. If my perception is right, this shadow would be the lady. The shadow met. could be that mysterious stranger, but I've actually had one smart pupil ask me this question. Teacher, embracing your shadow doesn't need to only refer to the narrator searching for love from the mysterious stranger. Couldn't it be Rose yearning, longing for her husband's love? but realizing, very sadly, her husband's heart is somewhere else. And I found that mind-blowing. I looked at it as a beautiful interpretation. Right, that is truly very interesting about learning this embracing your shadow. And you might be wondering as well, who is this shadow or even what is this shadow? Isn't it point A? Right. Well, we're going to take a short break. So while you ponder on that, we'll be taking a short break, but do not go anywhere. Stay tuned with us on Didate TV KPM. TV KPM Didate TV KPM Welcome back on Didate TV KPM. Now you're watching the Success SPM 2022 slot. And of course, it's a very interesting subject that we are learning today. English literature for Form 4 and Form 5. And with me is Puan A, who's going to share with us a bit more about sample questions that we're going to learn right now. Right. So earlier on, we took a look at an overview of what 
we all know regarding the text embracing your shadow before i show my pupils uh, what a sample question might look like, I always have to take a little bit of time to remind them about the assessment objectives. Meaning, for all of you out there, as you are revising the short story with your teachers and friends, when you prepare an answer to any given question, your essay response should include these AOs, as I call them. Yeah? So normally, I would tell the students, don't forget, it's not about the length, it's not about how long your essay is, but whether your essay has included AO1, 2, 3 and 4. If your answer lacks AO3, for example, then you would have done well with the other three AOs, but it would be lacking here and you wouldn't be able to score high. Yeah? The AOs 1 to 4 refer to knowing the text well, understanding underlying meaning, the ability to discuss language use, and of course, being able to provide a personal response. An example of personal response would be uh, the earlier question that I asked Hanif about responding to a declaration of love. How would you feel? Would you respond positively, negatively? Those all make up AO4, right? Let's take a look at this slide where I have an extract or passage taken from the short story. As you can see, this specific extract comes from the end, towards the tail end of the text. The narrator is about to fall asleep, and as Hanif just learned earlier, he's in a monologue, he's talking to himself, but he feels as though he's addressing the shadow, and he's telling her, whoever you are, wherever you may be, I hope that my warm thoughts will reach you. This extract is followed by a question. What do you think of the narrator in this scene? And it is a 15 mark question. Yeah. So this adheres to the format of the paper. A 15 mark question always follows a given passage, a given extract. How do we do this question? How do we answer it? What do you think of the narrator? Right? I would uh, ask, sorry, I would ask the students to take a look at Peel or my formula often used with my students. Not the orange peel, not the tangerine peel, but the P-E-E-L, which is your uh, point, evidence, elaboration and link formula. So, students out there, if you're responding to the question, what do you think of the narrator? Let's just say your first answer is, he's such a selfish individual. Fair enough, right? Fair enough. Fair enough. He thinks only of himself and not at all about the destruction he has, he has brought about to his family. So you have the P there. The point I want to make is the narrator is selfish. The E that follows would be your evidence. Where in the text can you prove? that he is indeed selfish. You have to be able to prove your statement, right? So that's your P and your first E. Your second E that follows is the elaboration. You cannot just put the P and the E or the what and the where, but not explain the why, right? So. If you say that he is selfish, if you say there's evidence from the text, you also need to elaborate. And here, a child might say, the narrator feels that his broken marriage just confirms what he already feels, that his relationship with the shadow proves the shadow is his true love. Once you have done the P and the E, and the E, you are left with the L. And the L is the link. How do you link all your answers back to the question? 
So one might summarize by saying, it is certainly frustrating, isn't it, to see a mature adult behave in such a selfish manner. And this selfish behavior includes resorting to this excuse, the specific excuse that has been given, how he mentions a grand uncle who also went through it. Liking someone, admiring someone from afar, never forgetting that someone that they met long ago. All right. So that's only one point. All right. What we've looked at so far is only one point. You could break it down into two paragraphs, for example. Okay. The next point is point number two. We may feel the narrator is foolish, selfish, foolish. Two strong points. So once you've dealt with point one, now you move on to point two, right? You would say, the narrator, I feel, is foolish and naive. He believes that being in a relationship with the shadow is what actually brings him happiness. Can I just say that? No, I cannot. I must provide evidence. Evidence, very good. Honey can already take this paper. <laughs> for SPM, yeah? What is the evidence that comes from the text? He seems to have no regrets when he says, my feelings for you will not fade away, despite the fact that it has been more than 18 years since I first saw you. Don't forget, what makes this short story or text so intriguing is the fact that they actually don't know each other. The shadow or this mysterious stranger doesn't know the narrator exists. We've established that, right? And there are moments of lucid and clear thoughts on the part of the narrator where he says, I know, I know that you don't know I exist, but I still love this relationship that we have, right? So you have the P, you have the E, you have the second E, and that would be the elaboration. What can we say? We can say that, as I mentioned earlier, despite moments of rationale, despite moments of awareness, realizing the effects of his actions, you still have the uh, narrator saying, my feelings for you remain unchanged. And what is the L at the bottom? Most of the time, I ask my students to consider a personal reaction. What do they feel looking at his foolish behavior? Disappointment, frustration. He doesn't take his wife as precious to his life. In his life, it takes her for granted. Those are and answers that you could put together following this template. Right? So looking back at the question, yeah, and the first point, what do you think of the narrator in this scene? You could formulate all right, uh, a response outline that includes point number one and point number two. Right. Here's a discussion question. Yeah? As readers, now, now that we're done reading the short story, how do we feel about the narrator? Okay, I'm not going to let Hanif answer. I'm going to ask Hanif to listen to what my students have responded. Sure, let's listen together. Teacher, my first reaction was absolute rage after reading the short story. I personally think that the narrator is a delusional and creepy individual. He says, you might have seen me too, or maybe not. So for me, this indicates that he's aware this relationship doesn't actually exist. But yet, we can seem obsessing in imagining the shadow on a daily basis. Secondly, I also think that he is an irresponsible spouse who had forgotten his promise to always stay faithful to Rose. When he says, on the night I proposed to Rose, I wondered if the engagement ring would fit your finger. It shows how the narrator is absolutely unfair and unfaithful to Rose by comparing her to some stranger he had met only once. I think that was a very interesting answer because she said 
filled with rage. Well, I wanted to say frustration, but I think that was a good option of an answer. Strong answer coming from my student over there who used the word rage, referring to extreme anger. Also saying that she thought of the husband as an irresponsible spouse, forgetting the promise that he made when he exchanged marriage vows with Rose. So, we've taken a look at the text, we've taken a look at a sample question and response outline. Uh, what's left is just the summary. And in summary, I think uh, Hanif will agree, the narrator has an unhealthy obsession towards the shadow. And this short story serves as a reminder to all of us that if we are, when we are in a relationship with a loved one, he or she deserves open communication from us. We should never keep secrets from them. What else? They deserve our honesty, love, trust and loyalty. Yes, those are very good values, I believe, that we should have in relationships. Yes. And I, I do wonder, well, at the same time, I do feel that level of frustration reading on this narrator because I believe she, she must be a great wife to him for the past 12 years, yet he is so in love with, with the mysterious with stranger. With the mysterious Correct. stranger, yeah. And I wonder as well, is that, is that actually the meaning of true love, though? Uh, so while you think about that, we're going to take a short break, but do not go anywhere. Stay tuned with us on d TV KPM. d TV KPM. d TV KPM. We are back on d TV KPM in the slot of success, SPM 2022. And it's a very interesting subject that we're learning together, which is English literature for Form 4 and Form 5. Now we're going to give focus prose and poetry, embracing your shadow and daffodils. That's our topic. Focusing on poetry, overview and devices. With me is Puan A. And Puan A, I guess I'm, I'm very excited to know what we're going to learn here. Okay, all right. Welcome back, all of you out there. As you can see, these are the 10 poems that you have on your list. This is the syllabus that you have to deal with. All 10 poems must be read, analyzed thoroughly. For today, we are specifically going to look at Daffodils by William Wordsworth, right? See how gorgeous they are, right? Imagine yourselves being in a field, somewhere outside, blue skies, bright sunshine, beautiful daffodils. How would you feel? Yeah? Oh. <laughs> I'll feel liberated. Liberated. Okay, let's see. What do we know about this poem? Initially feeling lonely, alone, yeah? Miserable. This poem shows us, the readers, how the persona's unexpected encounter he suddenly comes across a field of these yellow daffodils and observing them, watching them, lifts his mood. Very much like Hanif's answer earlier, liberated, that sense of freedom from the initial sadness that he feels. We later realise that what the persona is trying to express is how that memory, happy and cheerful memory, remains with him and helps him whenever he feels sad, whenever he has a moment of trouble. Okay, historically speaking, Daffodils by William Wordsworth is celebrated as a classic example of romantic poetry. And for those of you who have done this poem with your teachers, I know you know what I'm talking about. All right, romanticism as a subgenre of poetry, romanticism uh, focuses on appreciating nature, appreciating our surroundings, acknowledging the treasures that nature holds and how they are significant to man. Romanticism as a genre also focuses on man's creative imagination, how we as men have relationships with other human beings and our surroundings. 
So romanticism is very evident in this poem. It started out as a casual observation on the part of his sister, Dorothy Wordsworth. She wrote it in her journal, and he found it very interesting. He turned it into the poem that we know today. Daffodils stands in this form. It is made up uh, of four stanzas, as you can see. It begins with the very famous line, I wandered lonely as a cloud. So wandering sort of aimlessly with no sense of direction, not knowing where to go. And then it continues with the third line, when all at once, meaning suddenly, unexpectedly, I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils. So the second and the third stanza focus a lot on how the persona felt as he sat there, perhaps, under the trees, just admiring the beauty of the daffodils. It felt as though they had invited him in to watch a performance. He complied. He said, OK, I'll sit down and watch. And as he watched the show, he felt so much better. He says there, a poet could not but be gay. Gay there meaning happy. cheered up, happy, overjoyed. All right, those are the words that come to mind. A poet could not but be gay in such a jocund company. You can't stay miserable, you can't stay sad when you are in the company of such golden daffodils, brilliant in colour, performing for you. That's what he says. In the last stanza, what does he end with? My heart with pleasure fills and dances with the daffodils. All right? So I normally ask my students, is there a happy memory that you have in your personal collection of thoughts and experiences that always magically can cheer you up. That's exactly what happened here, right? That's exactly what happened with William Wordsworth's persona in this poem, where he felt so much better after observing the field of golden daffodils. Now that we've seen the poem, we've seen the poem and we know it is a romantic poem made up of four sestet stanzas, right? I'm sure Hanif is wondering, I'm going to explain for him. A sestet is a stanza that is made up of a quatrain, that's four lines, and then a couplet, and that's two lines. So each one of the four stanzas you see in this poem is made up of a sestet. So four times sestets, 24 lines. A lot of students will say, wow, structured, organized, yes. It is a structured poem. And it has a rhyme scheme, A, B, A, B. Those are the first four lines, followed by the couplet, C, C. Right? So you have a rhyme scheme. You know what the poem looks like. We also know that in this poem, daffodils is rich with poetic devices. What are the devices we have? We have hyperbole to exaggerate and emphasize. Right? They stretched in never-ending lines. So it sounds like there were as many daffodils as far as the eyes can see. You also have simile, a comparison being made, where the persona is being compared to a cloud. Then you have two other devices. You have personification. Right? What is the example that I have there? Fluttering and dancing in the breeze. Who is dancing in the breeze? The daffodils. So the daffodils there in the poem are being described as though they are actually dancers, dancing along to music and performing for the persona. Then you have an example here of visual imagery. When all at once I saw a crowd, 
a host of golden daffodils where beside the lake beneath the trees so you can visualize how he had walked along with no sense of direction and then he had unexpectedly come across this field of daffodils and how that encounter was so beautiful to just sit and watch all right so here's the poem again but as you can see i've colored the answers that were mentioned earlier all right in these lines here those are examples of simile personification hyperbole as well as visual imagery what other examples can you see examples of personification examples of hyperbole okay Hanif is about to cry. He can't figure out <laughs> what the answer could be. I'm going to ask one of my students to try and help you out. Please do. I think I would need help here. Let's take a look at her answer. Well, teacher, I found other examples for all three. For hyperbole, there is 10,000 saw I at a glance, referring to the daffodils. For personification, I found the line tossing their head in sprightly dance as a very good one. And lastly, for visual imagery, the phrase outdid the sparkling waves in glee is a very good example as well. Yes, that was a great help for me. Are her answers right, Pwede? Right. So, when you have that 10,000 saw eye, obviously, you're going to ask yourself, really? Did he count the daffodils one by one? Surely not. So, this device using 10,000 hyperbole there emphasizes how he felt. He felt as though he was looking at 10,000 daffodils. When you have tossing their heads, whose heads? The daffodils' heads. So, you have there the dancers, sorry, the daffodils dancing along like they were actual dancers, right? And here, outdid the sparkling waves in glee, a beautiful example of, what is outdid this? Sparkling waves in glee. Ah. Would you <laughs> say visual imagery? Yes, we can. This is an example of how the daffodils were in competition with the daffodils, the waves and the daffodils. Okay, so far? Right. I think that sounds good. So, a personification here is... Um, how do I describe a personification okay, here? Okay, good question. What is... Let me write this here. Please uh, excuse my scribble. What is personification? Personification is a device that we use when we put or place human traits, human characteristics to something may, that may not be alive, a non-living thing. So you may come across sentences like, uh, the sky cried today. We know and understand that from that sentence, the meaning or actual meaning is, there was heavy rain. Okay, The sky cried today. When we look at the poem, we find that you have personification being used to put their human characteristics, human traits to the daffodils. Of course, Hanif is going to say, yeah, but the daffodils are just flowers. Well, I think that would be very interesting. Or perhaps the trees wave in the breeze, Correct. something like that. Correct. Right. So while you think of more examples, we are going to take a short break. Perhaps you can share your answer with us at some time, all right? So do not go anywhere. Stay tuned with us on DDA TV KPM. DDA TV KPM. DDA TV KPM. And you are back now on Didate TV KPM. You're watching Success SPM 2022. We are learning English literature for Form 4 and Form 5. The topic is prose and poetry, embracing your shadow and daffodils. Now we're going to give focus on poetry, sample questions and response outline. And of course, the one sharing with us would be Puan A. And Puan A, I see that you're ready with your AOs. Yes. 
all right? Everybody recognizes them as AOs. AO 1, 2, 3, and 4, assessment objectives 1 to 4. Why do we push for students to always practice using them in their answers? Because I commonly am asked, how long should my response be? Uh, teacher, um, how many words should my essay be? Is it one page? Is it one and a half pages? And I always have to insist on getting them to sit down and taking a look at the assessment objectives. And I have to remind them, if your answer is comprehensive, all right, meaning to say there is a text that you have studied, there is a task that you are answering, your response should indicate knowledge of the text, knowledge of underlying meaning, knowledge of how language has been used in the text and the ability to provide personal response. If you can do all this, then you are definitely on the right track. All right, so we're looking again at the poem. You know already it's got four stanzas or each stanza is recognised as a sestet, okay? the quatrains and the couplets. We have already taken a look at the various devices that are found in this poem. So, what's left would be to take a look at the question. All right? Students need to remember there is no need for fear, anxiety. All right? Poems are always provided before the question. You do not have to worry yourself to sleep, wondering if you need to memorize the poem. The poems are provided for you, as I have given it to you here. And then we have a question. For 15 marks, as all questions based on poems are valued at 15 marks, you have the question there with close reference to Daffodils by William Wordsworth, discuss how nature can offer us comfort and joy. Obviously, the first question you're going to ask yourself is, what do I do? How do I answer this? How do I answer this question, teacher? Right. First and foremost, when you look at the question, what are the key words you need to focus on? Take another look with close reference to the poem. Discuss how nature can offer us, and I think you would have already circled or underlined, comfort and joy. So that's what you are going to focus on. So in green, as you can see, is a response outline. I would tell my students, think about how the encounter, that unexpected <laughs> encounter of meeting and observing the daffodils has given the persona comfort and joy. All right, that's the first idea I think all of us would have come up with. But in order to get there, you would have to consider what are the devices that have been used in order to convey this memory is a precious memory. This memory is an unforgettable memory. All right? So we're going to begin with one device. And the device here on this slide is personification. Okay. As Hanif asked earlier, personification is a device where we attach or place human traits to non-living things. How does that work in this poem? How do we relate that to comfort and joy? So a child might say, by describing the fields of daffodils as host, as crowd, you look at the choice of words there, we have that opportunity to imagine or visualize the persona being led into a concert venue, for example, a concert hall, for example, and he sits down to watch a delightful and enjoyable performance. 
that's personification in use. And you have that the daffodils are not just performing for the persona, they are even outdancing the waves in merriment, in pride. It's sort of like the daffodils are saying, we're better dancers than you. And daffodils wouldn't be able to do that, right? Anybody might say, but they're flowers. No, they're not. Not in this poem. In this poem, daffodils, as you can see here, using the words host and crowd, are like dancers performing for the appreciation of the persona. Right. Then you have another possible answer. You might want to say that the device simile as used in this poem, especially in the first two lines where he says, I wandered lonely as a cloud. When he likens himself, compares himself to a cloud floating aimlessly, he is indicating there the sadness and the loneliness that he feels. So you have there the simile in use, and that expresses how the persona feels, especially before he meets the daffodils. What happened after that? After that, clearly his mood changes, he is cheered up, the mood is one of joy, he is inspired by what he has seen. Number three, hyperbole or exaggeration. Now, most of us use hyperbole on a daily basis. I'm so hungry, I could eat a horse. <laughs> or, I ate so much, I'm going to explode. So those expressions indicate how we feel. And likewise, in this poem, hyperbole or the exaggeration used by the poet indicates to us the persona felt overwhelmed. It took him by such great force. Wow, an amazing sight. 10,000 saw I. And it was such an uplifting discovery because seeing those daffodils obviously made him feel so much better. All right? So those three answers are possible answers. You could outline uh, an essay response like this. So you would begin with an introduction, you would talk about the personification, you would discuss the simile, you would discuss the hyperbole, and last but not least, in conclusion, you would say the life of the persona is forever affected or changed after seeing the daffodils. Okay, so far? Yeah, All right. that is good. Uh, let's take a look at this discussion question. We've taken a look at the poem. We've taken a look at the sample question and answer. Now let's take a look at this question. How does seeing the dance of the daffodils, or how has, maybe I made a mistake there, how has seeing the dance of the daffodils changed the persona? Is he the same person from the beginning till the end of the poem? No. Right? The daffodils has given such a wonderful effect. Right? How has it changed him and changed him for the better? Honey, you want to try? I would try. I would love to try there. I do feel that the daffodils have positively impacted him. Positively Why? impacted him. Great Be response. Because he started with him feeling sad and that sadness had been uplifted. And he has this sense of joy, appreciation for nature, I believe. That great transformation from sadness to joy. Okay, let's see if one of my students, let's see if her answer matches yours. Right, let's take a look together. Well, firstly, it made the persona realize that the golden daffodils aren't just a flower or a part of the mother nature, but it is actually more than just a flower. I gazed and gazed, but little thought what wealth the show to me had brought. 
This shows that the prisoner was absolutely struck by the beauty of the golden daffodils that his gaze was actually transfixed to them. It was so beautiful that they naturally lifted up his mood and made him happy as he saw them dancing sprightly. Secondly, he remembers the happy memories of seeing the dancing golden daffodils whenever he is feeling lonely. For off when on my couch I lie, in vacant or pensive mood, they flash upon that inward eye. It was that precious memories in Chilkan company that remains and comfort him when he is feeling empty or in deep thoughts. Well, perhaps that's her answer match. That, a bit is, of an answer, that is very much a great match. Uh, thank you to Fatini, my pupil, as well as Hanif. What they have both successfully been able to do is to understand how mesmerizing the daffodils were and how that precious memory is one that will stay perhaps deep within the recesses of his mind but whenever he faces a struggle whenever he has a problem he is experiencing and he's by himself thinking about what to do, what's the next step he should take. Suddenly he is inspired by that memory and that memory of seeing the daffodils and how it made him feel will guide him to overcome the challenges and tribulations of life. I love, I love how Puan A said that. So with beautiful memories, you are able to overcome, you're able to offset all this trials and trials tribulations and that tribulations we go through of life. in yes. our daily lives. Yes. And Puan A, can we have a summary of what we have learned together today? Together, what we, we look at, we looked at pros. In particular, we looked at the short story, Embracing Your Shadow, the importance of communication, love and trust. And in poetry, we took a look at daffodils, how we, after reading that iconic romantic poem, must open our eyes and appreciate all the beauty that nature has. I fully agree to that because nature is beautiful and of course it is also our responsibility on a side note to always preserve this, this the beauty of our nature and that's very key and with that of course we would like to thank our teacher today which is Madam Asima Maludin or we call her Puan A. I think we had a brilliant lesson today. It was very heartwarming. I was very touched by some of the things that you had mentioned. Thank, thank you, you for very having much. me here today. And of course our interpreter which is Chegu BQ. So thank you so much Chegu BQ. Thank you for being here today and I'm sure pupils at home, you have learned so much and continue learning, embrace the knowledge, embrace the messages that you read in English literature and that would definitely help you in your daily lives. My name is HS and I hope to see you again on DDAT TV KPM. Bye everyone.